Hi, this is Glenn for Switch Up, here today to review Nickelodeon Kart Racers on the Nintendo Switch. Thank you to the developers for the review copy. A game based on some well-loved animated franchises, all partaking in a fun pastime such as kart racing, sounds like a recipe for success. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? It's going to go wrong, isn't it? Let's find out. As well as the obligatory cup competitions and time trial modes, Nickelodeon Kart Racers also includes a battle mode. This mode in itself has three different gameplay modes, including a classic battle, as well as others that see you capturing a flag or trying to collect the most coins. The actual racing is decent enough, although it does feel very slow on the default setting, but thankfully there are three levels of speed to choose from. As well as traditional races, there are also events such as elimination rounds during the cups. You can unlock new parts for your vehicle, which will improve the stats of your cart by collecting special item boxes during victory laps. An opportunity to take part in a victory lap happens every time you level up, and leveling up happens by gaining experience points from participating and winning races. Alternatively, you can also buy these parts in the shop using the coins that are scattered over each racetrack. There is the option to play locally with up to four players, and you can play all against all or team matches should you wish. I played some two player with my daughter, which is the footage you are seeing now, and this included playing the battle mode as well, and to be fair this worked quite well, she certainly enjoyed it anyway. A key part of the gameplay mechanic is that of slime. Now having never watched Nickelodeon TV channel, I had always seen the shows included in this game on other channels, I did a little digging just to see what the reason for the slime was, and discovered that the green slime is quite an iconic part of Nickelodeon, and has been ever since a Canadian TV show called You Can't Do That On Television aired on the channel in the early 1980s. I had no idea that the slime was such an integral part of the channel's identity, I guess you learn something new every day. Anyway, in this game, the purpose of the slime is to fill your slime meter, which then grants you a speed boost. You can fill it up to three bars and choose when you want to use it. At certain points of the level, you will be racing on a slime river, at which point your cart changes to a hovercraft and your slime meter is constantly charging. Some levels are even played completely on the rivers of slime, and this is a nice idea and just changes things up a little bit. There are over 20 tracks, which are fairly well designed but nothing special, and there are also 12 characters based on the four franchises, being Hey Arnold, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Rugrats, and SpongeBob SquarePants. The roster size is a little disappointing in all honesty. For what I'm assuming is meant to be a celebration of all things Nickelodeon, they didn't really seem to push the boat out in terms of the number of franchises they invited to the party. As you would expect, there are weapons to pick up and use on each track, and these are all related to the various franchises, and some of them include Krabby Patties that grant you invincibility, Tommy's Ball that targets the first place racer, and Michelangelo's Nunchucks that act like boomerangs. On the whole, gameplay gets 12 out of 20. Although the game looks fairly colourful, it's disappointing how lacking in character Nickelodeon Kart Racers is. There are a few little nods, such as Angelica having her Cynthia doll and Michelangelo eating pizza, but on the whole, the characters just come across as quite soulless. The tracks are based on the shows, and it can be quite fun to spot the little background details, such as Phil and Lil standing by the side of the road in one of the Rugrats tracks, and Splinter and Shredder fighting while she raced through the sewers, but it's just quite ironic and very sad that a game based on so many iconic characters can be so lacking in, well, character. Graphics receive 10 out of 20. There is no voice acting at all in the game, absolutely no sound bites are used, with the developers instead opting for these very generic speech bubbles at the bottom of the screen. This is such a crushing disappointment, as it really makes the game feel devoid of any sort of personality. These are characters who have built up their personality and their charm over years of different episodes, so to leave them without a voice is practically unforgivable. The music itself is also about as generic as it gets. The music used has no real connection to the theme of any of the racetracks, 
and the themes of the various franchises are completely absent, which may have been understandable had they at least used it as inspiration for the music, but no, the music is completely and utterly generic. The sound effects also do little to nothing to add to the experience or build any sort of tension. If I can refer to Mario Kart just for a second, when you are in first place in that game and someone unleashes a blue shell at you, you know it's coming, you can hear it on its way and the tension builds. Here, a similar item, the aforementioned Tommy's Ball, hits you with no warning and you could have been hit with pretty much any regular projectile for all you would have known. Audio is a huge disappointment and unfortunately receives 6 out of 20. To give credit where it's due, the controls in Nickelodeon Kart Racers are actually pretty good. ZR allows you to accelerate and ZL controls your power sliding, which is pleasingly responsive. The B button uses your item and X is how you use your speed boost once you've accumulated enough slime to earn one. You also have options to enable auto acceleration, which is useful when playing with a younger child, such as my little girl who often unintentionally takes her fingers off of the ZR button while playing, and there's also an option to use the motion controls by tilting the controller like a steering wheel, and again, this works quite well. Controls are certainly a strength of the game and they receive 15 out of 20. Nickelodeon Kart Racers sells for £29.99 or $39.99 and there is also a physical version available. Although there is a fair amount of content available with three types of battle mode, local multiplayer and the cup competitions, the general look and feel of the game is not one that sells for this sort of price. Poor production values let this game down and I would imagine that the physical version will drop in price pretty quickly and is probably the way to go if you are interested in this game. Value gets 10 out of 20. To conclude, Nickelodeon Kart Racers is not a complete train wreck. The gameplay is just about decent enough and the controls are fairly tight but what it is missing is any real feeling of love having gone into it. You should not be able to use the word soulless about a game based on popular animated characters, but that's exactly how it seems. There is a real lack of charm, and that's completely unforgivable. If you enjoy these characters, the game is good enough that you'll probably get some enjoyment out of this, and playing it with my young daughter was a good time to be fair, but on the whole, Nickelodeon Kart Racers gets a switch up score of 53%. Many thanks everybody for watching this video, I hope you enjoy what you've just seen, take care, and as always, happy gaming. Nickelodeon Kart Racers, sliming soon.